Hey everybody, David the AI Guide. Welcome to another episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. Really appreciate it. We at the AI Guide are trying to make AI human. I am trying to make AI human by explaining the human impact. And I'm about to do that right now with today's story. But first, quickly click the link below to get your free artificial intelligence resource that provides a very good introduction to AI beyond what we can do in these short videos. It's very, the resources provided are all good. And um, check out my book on Amazon where I talk briefly about the history of AI from start to now, and then look at all a bunch of different critical industries and how AI is being used right now today in these critical industries and how pervasive or widespread the use of AI is becoming. So it's a quick read, well worth it, check it out. I hope you like it. So weather. <laughs> Weather forecasting has always been tricky. And the reason why is that there is randomness in weather forecasting. So uh, going back, let's say 40 years ago to the 1980s or even 50 years ago to the 1970s, um, weather forecasts were often wrong because of this randomness and because the weather prediction models were not very sophisticated back in those days at all. And even the radar that they had was not nearly as sophisticated. And finally, and very, very importantly, keep in mind that the first weather satellite <laughs> Uh, that ever existed was launched in 1972. So before that, there were no satellites and that was Landsat 1 and it was more for looking at um, vegetation changes, urbanization, stuff like that, not really weather forecasting, but the weather forecasting satellites started to come shortly after Landsat 1. So, uh, satellites provided a huge breakthrough because suddenly they could see weather coming from a long, long way away, which they could never see before. And um, also uh, they could, uh, the radars got better and some of the early modeling got better, but it was all very gradual until uh, the 2000s. And this is when machine learning really started to get going, right? In the 90s and 2000s. So by the 2000s, machine learning models started to be able to take all of the weather data that's been accumulated over 150 years here in the U.S. and different links in other parts of the world. But global weather data can be consolidated and aggregated now and looked at and it can be very detailed into very small areas, individual towns and cities and everything. Uh, and AI is perfect for a massive data set like that that's well labeled and over many years and is uh, very detailed. So this is a perfect uh, environment in which to use AI. But machine learning models still had a lot of error. That's why even today, when you look at the forecast hurricane tracks, they're night and day better than they used to be, but they're still wrong sometimes. And there's an American model and a European model that they talk about on the Weather Channel. Uh, but those are machine learning models and they are still wrong because the data is incomplete at the time that weather events are happening and there's the randomness. Randomness is 10 inches of rain, five miles and, and five miles away, no rain. <laughs> That's randomness in weather. However, uh, deep mine strikes again, another industry to be disrupted by AI. And machine learning, of course, is AI, but 
it is not as sophisticated as neural networks and deep learning. Uh, so DeepMind invented what they call uh, DGM or um, and uh, deep generative model. So this is a, a GANs, a, a, a adversarial model that uh, competes against itself and gets to better and better results, but using deep learning. So DeepMind teamed up with NOAA and they did a, a study. They built this DGM and then they did a, a very scientific study with 50 top meteorologists and compared results between current forecast methods using existing machine learning and other techniques that are historical that they've used uh, versus this model. And by the end of the testing phase, 89%, almost 90% of these 50 meteorologists said that the DGM was better than their prior forecasting techniques. So this is a breakthrough in weather forecasting. Weather forecasting is extremely important. You can tell that extreme weather events are becoming more and more common. And I'm not going to get into why that's happening and, and, the, and politics and all that. That's not what we do here. What I am going to say is that in terms of making AI human, this has a real human impact, right? Because if you can tell someone, watch out in this five mile area because there's going to be a flash flood, that saves lives. That is a very, very positive use of artificial intelligence to save lives, prevent property damage, and give people warming, warning. This can be particularly helpful in places where tornadoes are common, for instance, right? Uh, because tornadoes are extremely random and erratic. Uh, so uh, if this model can better predict a tornado's path and how long it'll be on the ground and exactly where it's gonna hit, that'll be a real breakthrough uh, for this kind of a model. So, uh, this is another breakthrough from DeepMind. It's a great use of AI. It has obvious human impact uh, in a positive way, dramatically improves weather forecasting. And as this uh, DGM continues to learn, which it will because that's the nature of AI and those algorithms as the data set grows and gets bigger and bigger and bigger, it gets better and better and better at its predictions. So this is big. And it's cool to talk about an area that we haven't talked about so much, weather prediction. But uh, the satellites that have been launched over the last 50, almost 50 years, uh, 49 years <laughs> and since Landsat 1, uh, and now the satellites are much, much, much more uh, sophisticated and computer vision, uh, as it has improved, the satellites have improved, orders of magnitude, so it's all coming together to dramatically improve weather prediction and save human lives and prevent property damage and give people time to be prepared to get out of harm's way. So this is all good stuff. Thank you, DeepMind. Uh, keep working on cool stuff. Just Think, think to the end about what you're working on and don't invent everything just because it's cool, even though it might be harmful to humans. <laughs> so thank you so much. Click the link below, get your free AI resource, go to Amazon, check out the Beginner's Guide to AI. Please like, share, and subscribe. And we'll see you next time. Thanks a lot. Take care. Bye.